Several months ago, BenQ sent me one of their Screen Bar Plus monitor lights to check out, and to my surprise, it's become the best addition to my desk setup. Now BenQ sent me the upgraded version, the Screen Bar Halo. Is this truly a Halo product worthy of the cost? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and like I just mentioned several months ago, I did a pretty comprehensive review of the Screen Bar Plus monitor light. Now, I've done a lot of product reviews, and in almost every case, those products get shelved when I'm done until I need them again for follow-up or comparison. There aren't many things. In fact, there's nothing except the BenQ monitor light that's become a permanent part of my day-to-day -day setup. And for the past couple of months, the new screen bar Halo has been lighting up my workspace. Now, I'll reiterate the reason and benefits of a monitor light, but first let's go through the unboxing, design and features, setup, and do some testing. BenQ products run the full gamut from budget friendly to high end, and their lighting products definitely live in the premium range, and that's first imperative in the packaging. The box itself is nice, it's solid, simple branding, clean graphics. Inside, the individual components are all well protected in a molded plastic tray. First, the light bar itself is 50 centimeters long and about 23 millimeters in diameter and is constructed out of silver media blasted aluminum alloy with a polycarbonate window. Compared to the Screen Bar Plus, which I considered a premium light, you can see the Halo is even more robust and, well, more premium. And one of the major differences between the two is the counterbalance mount of the Halo, unlike the Plus, is permanently attached because the counterbalance is also a light, which lights up the rear of the display. Next is the control dial. Again, very premium feel. It's constructed with an ABS base. The outer dial is an aluminum alloy and it has a polycarbonate touch surface. Another significant upgrade over the screen bar plus includes the fact that it's wireless. Setup for the light is pretty simple. The mount just sits on the top of the monitor and is held in place by spring tension and the weighted counterbalance. And as simple as this looks, the light is firmly held in place. The light is compatible with flat monitors that are between 7 and 60 millimeters thick, and thanks to this included adapter, it is also compatible with curved monitors between 16 and 42 millimeters thick. And those thicknesses are the actual top edge of the monitor. However, if the monitor tapers out further, the mount does open up quite a bit farther to mount to those types of displays. The light bar itself can rotate up to 35 degrees. There's a 1.5 meter USB-A cable attached and the light bar can be powered by any USB power source that provides at least 5 volts and 1.3 amps. For testing, I'll be using a USB-A port on my surge protector power strip that exceeds those specs. Now, most USB-A type A ports on modern desktop computers can deliver 1.3 amps, but some may only deliver the rated 500 milliamps for 2.0 ports or 900 milliamps for 3.0. So in some cases, you will need to provide a USB power supply of some sort as the monitor light does not include one. Once the battery is installed in the control dial, there's nothing special to do, it just works. The dial is motion activated, so to turn it on, just wave your hand over it. The middle power control turns the light on and off. The control on the bottom center toggles between the front light, the rear light, or both. There's a brightness function that allows you to use the outer dial to select the brightness from about 250 lux to 800 lux. Switching to the temperature function allows of a cool 2700 Kelvin to a warm 6500 Kelvin light. Once you find your ideal settings, you can save it as a favorite. There's also an auto function that with one touch will set the light to 500 lux at 4000 K. And just like I did for the Screen Bar Plus, I set up the light in accordance with BenQ's technical specs and measurements and tested the illumination levels of the monitor light. Now, there are some differences between how the lighting functions work between the Plus and the Halo. First, the Halo has a larger illumination area with a lower maximum brightness of 800 lux, but my testing indicates that it can exceed that. However, while the Screen Bar Plus had two auto modes that set the workspace light to 500 lux within the 60 by 30 centimeter work area if the ambient light was above 50 lux and 300 lux if it was below that. The Halo's auto mode just sets the larger 63 by 40 centimeter working area to 500 lux, regardless of ambient lighting conditions. Now, the auto mode only works for the front light and unlike the Screen Bar Plus, which hit the illumination levels in all of my testing, the Halo did not, with even the brightest center point of the working area not hitting 500 lux and the perimeters falling off to as low as 250 lux. 
I repeated the test several times under varying ambient light conditions and the auto function never achieved 500 lux. The only reason I can think of for this is that unlike the screen bar plus, which has the ambient light sensor built into the control dial, the halo sensor is in the light bar and may not be as precise in measuring ambient light levels, but that's just an educated guess. Now, despite the auto function not working as advertised, the light bar does get adequately bright and is the brightest monitor light with the largest illumination area of any light bar I've seen. However, the total output of the front light is reduced when the rear light is on, which I believe is a result of the limited power available from the USB-A connection. In any case, it accomplished this huge and bright field of light without introducing any distracting glare on the display, either matte or glossy. Before I get into the overall conclusion of the screen bar halo, let's do a quick overview of the purpose of a monitor light like this. If you're in a dimly lit area, continually refocusing from a bright display to a dim workspaces causes eye fatigue. The iris is a muscle after all, and like any muscle, you work it too much, it gets tired, which leads to eye fatigue, pain, and even headaches. So illuminating the desk helps prevent that. Also, working in a dark room with just the bar as a light source will also lead to eye fatigue because even if you aren't aware, your eyes will be continually adjusting to the strong light in your primary field of view and the dark peripherals. So the halo adds the rear light that illuminates the periphery to help avoid that. And I can honestly say that despite all the other pros and cons I'm about to talk about, the screen bar halo fulfills its purpose perfectly. Since I've added the screen bar to my workspace, I rarely deal with eye fatigue or headaches, even after eight to 10 hour editing sessions. It's definitely made me more productive. So to kick off the pros and cons, that's the biggest pro. It does its job well and does it without being noticed. The light from the bar nor the rear light shines directly in your eyes like some monitor lights I've seen. And most importantly, the screen bar doesn't add any glare or hot spots to the display or interfere with image quality. In fact, my favorite part of the light is you don't even notice it's there unless it's off. Then, I immediately noticed something's wrong. Now, the screen bar halo isn't perfect and there are still some areas that can be improved. First, because the light draws more power than some USB-A type ports on a desktop PC can deliver, BenQ should really add a power adapter for it. I do really like the wireless control dial, eliminating wires from my setup is great, and because I just basically set it and forget it, I never really use the dial too much. I can just remove it all together or just move it out of the way because it has a range of about a meter. However, if you continually readjust the lighting, this dial isn't perfect as when activated, only the current control is lit up and the black on black control surface makes seeing the other controls difficult. In fact, the auto dimmer and favorite controls, while they look great on camera, are actually almost impossible to see with the naked eye. But the control surface is a fingerprint magnet, so that makes the controls easier to find, I guess. However, this is still much better than fumbling with buttons on the top of the light bar like other monitor lights. The auto dimmer function not hitting the stated illumination levels is a problem. 500 Lux just so happens to be the OSHA illumination requirements for a personal workspace. I won't make excuses for BenQ. If they advertise this feature, it should work, but realistically, outside of an office environment, I don't see much use for the function. I find the favorites function much more useful. I have the light and temps dialed into where I like them and saved as my favorite, so if it ever changes, I can just hit that little heart if, well, I can find it and get right back to the lighting I like. The last thing I wish the light had was the ability to control the front and rear lights independently. As it is with both lights on, they can only be controlled together. So setting different illumination levels or temperatures for each doesn't seem to be possible. Finally, I think the biggest obstacle for the BenQ screen bar halo is the price. While the screen bar plus comes in at a class leading $139, the higher tier Halo comes in with a price tag of $179. In my opinion, this cost moves this monitor light out of consideration for the average consumer. You're not buying this to put on top of your $200 monitor to light up your $30 keyboard. The name is spot on here. This is the Halo product when it comes to monitor lights. This is the best monitor light you can buy. The best materials, the best build quality, largest and brightest lighting area, longest lifespan rated at 50,000 hours, 
best warranty, this is the light you're buying to put on top of your iMac Pro or Pro Display XDR or 5K Ultrafine to light up your $450 worth of magic peripherals or your $800 custom mechanical keyboard. If you do serious work for long hours on a computer and you have a top of the line setup, then this is the monitor light for you. And if not, that's fine. $179 is a big ask for something like a light, but don't dismiss the added benefits of a light like this. Even in a well-lit computer room, a computer workspace is typically in shadows. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I never even considered a monitor light, but now that I've used it, I can't imagine not having one. If you want more info on the screen bar Halo or BenQ's less expensive options, there are links in the description below. Click that like if you like this and subscribe if you want more. I hope to catch you in the next one.